Welcome to the third Millennium Dawn tutorial. This is the continuation of our learning series to help give players the skills that they need to enjoy this mod to the furthest. At its core, Hearts of Iron is a military game, and this is no different for Millennium Dawn, although it does have a lot more to it in other areas. The military aspects of this mod may appear a little overwhelming, but don't worry. Follow my tutorial and you'll have no problem dealing with the AI and enjoying your game to the fullest. Let's get going. The menus for military units will look quite differently in this mod compared to others and vanilla, but it's fairly straightforward. At the top you have simple infantry equipment which is easy to recognize. Below that is support equipment and the rest are simple stat bonus text which are useful and straightforward. It's important to note here that the special forces bonuses are huge and if you want them for pushing which I highly recommend you will definitely want to take these. An important thing to understand in this mod is how much better marine divisions are. Whether it is infantry or armor, every type of unit will have a marine equivalent, which is simply better. Not only do they have a river and amphibious bonus, but they also have a massive organization edge over regular units. Therefore, it is always worth building and using divisions with marine units rather than regulars, period. Unlike Vanilla, there is a major difference in this mod combat-wise, with the optimal combat width in battle being 120 width. This can be found here on your division screen, and is a really important thing to always understand, not only for this mod, but for Vanilla as well. If you have two 12 width units in battle, and the enemy has two 30 widths, then he will be able to utilize more of his combat line than you, meaning his divisions will almost certainly beat yours. In Vanilla, it is always best to build 20 width and 40 width divisions. In this Millennium Dawn mod, the meta is 30 and 60 widths. The first thing to note is the Legacy Doctrines, which are defined by the nation's history prior to the Millennium Dawn start date. It is not changeable, so you will be stuck with what you have. It's always worth taking a look at these to see what kind of advantages you have to start off. From there we move on to the three major doctrines of William Dawn, which can be roughly understood as attacking, defense, and survival. First off, attacking doctrine. Network-centric warfare is the model used by most major technologically advanced nations in the modern era. It combines technology, air, and superior attack in a devastating combo that will leave your enemy asking themselves what happened. It gives some very useful bonuses to air, speed, and breakthrough. This is a good doctrine to pick if you have a lot of high-tech air and good armor divisions, as well as a military industry to pop them out in mass. If you are playing a western nation such as the US or Germany, this is probably your best option. Second, we have defense. Decentralized warfare is a doctrine for nations who do not expect to have a major armor presence or numerical advantages. It gives you a few very powerful delaying and defensive tactics, so it's perfect for nations with a lot of manpower, but lower tech and armor amounts. Use it if you are playing a nation like China or India for best effect and plan to be on the defensive. Lastly, there is survival, which is best used by nations with no air or armor. Guerrilla warfare is the final tactic and provides a few specifically useful bonuses, specifically recruitable population bonuses. Take this doctrine if you are playing a very small nation which has a huge strategic disadvantage. It provides you with the capacity to defend longer and put more troops on the front line. Armies are very expensive in this mod, and it is important to remember that things work slightly differently than vanilla. Every single dockyard and military factory require a GDP cost upkeep in addition to a fuel cost. This makes even producing the military equipment a significant cost on your nation. Every single division, ship, and plane also costs money to maintain, so be careful to always check your budget to make sure you aren't running a major deficit for your military. The richer your country's GDP per capita is, the more it costs as well, in addition to the military spending level. What this all means is that you will have to pay close attention to your economy when going to war. Unlike vanilla, one cannot simply build as big as they like and not have to worry about the consequences. 
It is important to remember after the new beta update that regular buildings have fuel upkeep costs. This will result in your fuel economy being much more unstable, so make sure to always account for building costs when deciding how many biofuel refineries to build or oil to import. At Millennium Dawn, armor is huge and requires a lot of fuel, so keep that in mind. In this section, I will be showing you a few basic templates which will be more than enough to deal with the AI in single player. I'm sure there are far better and more efficient ones, but in this video we will be keeping it simple. I have not played any Millennium Dawn multiplayer, so I do not know how that meta changes things. First off is the tank template we will be using. Tanks are very effective for pushing, but in this mod they tend to be inferior to IFVs due to their terrain modifiers. Tanks only really retain their combat superiority when fighting in plains, desert, and urban tiles. They are great at holding and pushing, but only if they are on these tiles. For any other place, it is better to use IFVs. The main part of your fighting force should be IFV divisions as shown here. These divisions are equally versatile and effective, keeping their fighting power on most tiles and are especially useful for naval invasions and river crossings. It is with these units that you can push most of your enemies. However, they do require lots of good IFVs, which require lots of production power. Another very powerful unit for pushing, which should be included within your armies as special forces. Much like actual modern times, they are an intrinsic part of combat operations and should be utilized properly. These units are very high on org and can push well. They also don't require IFVs, so are a good cheap addition to your forces. Lastly, I will be showing you a simple infantry unit to make which can plug the holes in your line if needed. Don't try to push with these units as they will fall apart against a good enemy, but they can be useful if you need extra units or are playing a very small, poor nation. Air in the mod appears complex, but once you look deeply into the stats of the different types of planes, it becomes clear that you don't need a bit of everything. If you are a warmonger, it is best to produce two types of planes for maximum efficiency and effectiveness. Cast is the foundation of your military power, and by keeping up with this research and producing a steady amount of them, you will be giving your armed forces a huge advantage. Remember to prioritize attack and engines, but one or two on range will help if you plan on invading areas without a lot of air bases. In addition to the cast, it is best to research and produce air superiority fighters. These are the best for taking down and winning air engagements with enemy aircraft and for giving you the air superiority needed to make good use of CAS. Make sure to prioritize attack and engines to give them the best chance of winning air combat. As a general rule for how to utilize this air build, first you will put up your air superiority fighters alone to clear enemy aircraft and get superiority. Only once this is done and you have totally green air do you put up your CAS. Generally speaking, Naval is incredibly unbalanced for this mod. There is a ton of customization for you to enjoy, but if one understands Naval mechanics well enough, it is easy to design ships that can wipe every AI fleet. For this guide, I will go only surface level so as to explain to the average player how to build their Navy in a manner that will make them not have to worry about it. For any player who does not have a lot of background in Hoi Naval mechanics, this mod will appear very intimidating. Therefore, I will show you three different ship templates that when built will allow you to dominate navally and not have to worry about this aspect of the game. The first template to make for your fleet is a good anti-sub corvette. These ships will allow you to deal with the pesky subs which the AI will be making en masse. Put maximum anti-sub defenses onto the corvette in addition to one light gun. Max tech Sonar will provide you a very powerful boost to anti-sub capacity, and the best engines possible allow you the capacity to range far from home ports. Next we have an all-around your destroyer that will make up the bulk of your navy. These ships put out a lot of light attack, allowing them to clear the enemy fleet screens to destroy their more powerful vessels. For this build, you will make every slot light guns at the highest level you can, in addition to one helipad. 
Max Level Radar provides a huge boost to stats in addition to advanced reactor engines which require no fuel and have ridiculous range. The last ship you should make for your navy is a good missile submarine. These subs are incredibly deadly and can be used to take out enemy fleets. Put on as many max level land attack missiles as you can, in addition to good radar for max effectiveness. Lastly, it is important to note that the best way to deal with the massive amount of subs the AI will be putting out is to build maritime patrol craft, which are naval bombers. These are incredibly effective at killing ships, especially submarines, so make sure to use them if you plan to go to war with naval power countries. In this mod, I briefly want to highlight the nations you need to be watching out for. A lot of folks will be coming from vanilla and assume that their strategies and skills are good enough to take down most nations, which is not the case for all of them. The United States, Germany, France, China, and Russia are all nations with sizable and advanced militaries. This is not even taking into account the NATO alliance. The USA especially has an enormous air and navy they can bring to bear, so be careful and patient when preparing for war with them. Nukes are not in the mod at the present time due to the large missile update the dev team is making right now. This will replace the vanilla nuke system for one where nuclear weapons are used in a modern sense along with ICBMs and the like. Until this update comes out, you can either choose to play with no nuclear weapons or go to the options and activate the vanilla version. This will, however, cause problems with the AI in game, so be careful. This video more or less assumes one has basic knowledge for Hearts of Iron military mechanics, and for anyone who doesn't understand part of what has been described, I will be linking several YouTube channels that I think best cover land, air, and naval guides and tutorials. Use these if you want to understand what has been talked about or generally improve your hoist skills. Check the video description to find these links. The capacity to make factions in this mod is limited by focus trees, so it is important to remember that not every nation will be able to form one. Therefore, if you plan on making your own faction, check your focus tree to make sure that this is even an option for you. Alternatively, if your nation cannot, chances are you will get invited to one that another nation will create. Taking leadership is easy to do if you are a strong nation. If you are like me and most games like to end the game with a world war, it is very important to be able to get into a faction because groups like NATO and the UNASUL will prove to be very powerful even to a good player. Don't be afraid to accept a faction request offer and just take control once you're in it. It is important to note that in this mod you are not able to core with compliance. This means that a lot of your potential manpower in factories will never be yours if you just immediately annex territory. However, there is a solution to this. In Millennium Dawn, if you pop in a nation and annex it diplomatically, you do core the territory. Therefore, if you want the most out of conquered territory, make sure to pop it first. This concludes the third Millennium Dawn tutorial. I hope that these guides will make this mod playable and enjoyable for you. Mods are what makes Paradox games and especially Hearts of Iron so fantastic, and these guides are intended to help you play the mod to the max of its potential fun. As always, I'm Hamrabi. Thanks for watching and remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the videos. I also stream on Twitch, so feel free to check me out. There's a link in the description. Happy hunting, guys.